In the game Quake, there are many different quirks about the way the game is compiled. Some of these have to do with the entities themselves and how they act in the world. For instance, doors are only usually capable of moving in any of the 360 degrees around the yaw axis. However, there are two special exceptions for up and down. A value of negative one for doors will allow it to move up, and a value of negative two will allow it to move down. There are many entity quirks like this, which honestly deserve an entire video of their own. However, today I want to talk about a specific quirk based on this question from Chuma. In Quake, there are multiple compiling steps. The first of which is called QPSP, which serves multiple purposes, such as differentiating the inside of the map from the outside. This works exactly like a paint bucket fill tool. If you're familiar with a paint bucket fill tool in a 2D application, you'll know that it fills all of a certain area with a certain color. Let's imagine a room in a 2D scenario. Let's say we have four brushes, one here, one here, one here, and one here. The first step of compiling differentiates the inside from the outside using filling, choosing a point inside of the map and filling from it. The way it does this is by using something similar to a paint bucket tool. It quote unquote fills the inside of the map and anything that's attached to the inside of the map, it saves. Anything that isn't attached to the inside of the map is culled. This is also the step where the compiler determines if there's a leak. The end result is that your back faces and all of the outer parts of brushes are completely gone. You'll notice that if you no-clip around maps inside of Quake, you don't see the outside surfaces usually. Now, how does it actually do this filling step? How does it know what to check for in terms of what is inside and what is outside? Now, this is actually done by using entities. Entities themselves are separated into two types, point entities and brush entities. Things like doors, platforms, funk walls, and funk illusionaries, those are all brush entities and do not count towards the filling of a map. For this reason, you can put doors, platforms, and other brush entities just out in the void and nothing will go wrong. Instead, only point entities are used. Point entities are different from brush entities in that, while some may have a bounding box and model attached, they are actually defined by a single point, and instead, the clipped hole sizes of the map determine where it actually sits in that space. This is a little more technical than I really know how to explain, but if you would like to learn more about the different hole sizes in Quake, feel free to watch this video by Matt's Ramblings. It does a very good job of explaining certain parts of the BSP compiling step. Now the issue I would like to talk about is when you have an area that doesn't have a point entity inside of it. So, for instance, here we have two point entities. We have the info player start and the ambient drone. Both of them only have a single point that they actually occupy. And you can find that by going into the entity tab and looking for the origin key value. Lights are also point entities and as such, they also help towards this filling procedure. Conversely, entities like funk walls do not have an origin associated with them and as such, aren't subject to this filling procedure. However, for instance, if we were to have an entirely separate room with nothing inside of it, that room would be completely cold. You can see here, I'm looking around the outside of our map, and we do not see any separate room. Now, something interesting happens if I place an info teleport destination inside of this room. So let's go ahead and make a teleporter so that we can get in there. Here I've made my brush teleporter and now we're going to add a trigger. Make it a trigger teleport. And target our entity, our info teleport destination. 
So, this should work. Let's go ahead and compile the map, and see what happens. Now, many mappers actually run into this when they first start out mapping. The first thing that they might think is that their room is too small. So, they might expand the room out a little bit. After compiling this, you'll see we get the same issue. In fact, not only is everything not there, our room isn't even rendered in-game. What's going on? I thought we had a point entity in our room. Well, this actually has to do specifically with how holes are calculated. You see, when we put our info teleport destination flat on the ground like this, it's actually inside of one of the clipping holes. Now, this is perfectly fine, because the way the player and monsters get teleported is offsetted from the info teleport destination's actual origin, but when it comes to that filling step, because it's inside of that clipping hole, again, it does not get properly used for that filling step. You'll notice I added a light so that you could actually see the inside of this area. Now, lights, when checking for filling, are proper entities, meaning that they can populate an area and fill it properly. If we were to bring this light to the center of the room and recompile, Now it works just fine. And we can achieve the same effect if we remove our light, move our info teleport destination to the rough center of the room, and compile again. Notice the room is completely dark, but if I open the console and type R underscore Fulbright 1, we can actually see the inside of the room. We can also traverse it, and there aren't any clipping issues. One particular area where this becomes especially annoying is when dealing with instant teleports. Some mods, like Arcane Dimensions and Alkaline, add functionality to the teleport known as an instant teleport. These are often made for seamless transitions between areas in levels. So, what's different about these instant teleports? Well, for one, they don't actually use an info teleport destination. They use a brush entity called an info teleport instant destination. Remember, I said brush entities do not count for filling an area. And the same exact thing applies here. Had I not included things like lights and the ambient drone for the slip gate, this area would not have filled properly. And you would have run into the same issues that we ran into earlier. Now remember when we were having problems putting down our teleport destination on the ground? This is because the origin of the teleport destination is at the very center and bottom of the bounding box. Now other point entities, like enemies, health boxes, and items have offset origin values. Their origin is not exactly at the center bottom point that they are. Instead, they're usually more at the direct center where the visual model is in the editor. Because of that, if we were to make a completely separate room and put something like a quad damage in it, the room would be filled and would be walkable. Now, this only works for some items. Specific items like health packs or ammo packs will often not fill things by themselves. However, you can see why things are like this. Effectively, if there were no entities in an area, then it's safe to assume that that area would go completely unused, and wouldn't need to be part of the final map compile. So let's say you have an area, and you don't want to bother putting items in it yet, you just want to make sure that it looks alright. Now this is actually a rather interesting edge case, as usually lights themselves will already fill an area, but let's say your area isn't even lit yet. What you can do, is you can go into your entity browser, and grab an entity called Info Null, drag it into the game area, and this step is important. 
you need to make sure it's at least 32 units from any one face. Now, if we compile our map, you'll see I can head over into this area and walk around freely. But, like I said, it's pretty rare to want to play test before an area actually gets filled. Usually, when you play test, you want to do so with areas that are at least far enough along in development that they themselves will be filled with no issues. However, in cases like with our info teleport destination, and maps that maybe don't have any enemies and are instead rather ambient experiences, you will often run into this issue, so I hope that this simple fix that I've provided helps. I also hope this explanation, while not completely thorough, helped somewhat in people understanding how the filling process works in Quake, and helps make your mapping a little bit easier. As a final note, I would like to recommend all of Matt's Rambling's Quake 1 videos, especially those about the BSP itself. I find while they go over the technical aspects of BSPs, they're all rather easy to understand, and can improve your appreciation of the thought that went into the compiling steps of this classic game. Thank you very much for watching, and good luck in your future mapping endeavors.